They say that training builds you up and racing breaks you down. Welcome to episode 16 of my 2022 training diaries. I'm just getting back to training this week after taking pretty much an entire week off from running following my seven day race in the country of Georgia. So I thought I'd talk today about exactly that, about the need for recovery after a big race or event. I spent most of this past week doing just short hikes with maybe just a bit of easy running mixed in, sort of as run walk intervals. So my longest hike was about 90 minutes and I never pushed harder than very low zone one, so a very easy effort. My coach Eric had actually scheduled these for me along with the day of cross training on the bike, although I ended up going more by feel and sort of working around my personal schedule this week because it was my birthday last week, so I had a couple of dinners with my family. But the goal this week was simply recovery. When following a structured training program, we're typically employing what's called periodized training. This is based on the idea of progressively overloading and stressing your body and then allowing it to recover before stressing it further. The recovery periods are just as important as the stress in allowing our bodies to gradually adapt and to build fitness towards a goal, typically a race or some other kind of big effort. Now, a macro cycle is the largest unit, which might refer to your season as a whole, or perhaps like in my case, you'll have more than one macro cycle in a season if you're training for more than one race in a given year. We then break this up further into what are called meso cycles, which might be a four week training block where you focus on speed or maybe building volume with a three week build along with a one week recovery before starting another block of training. And the last block before a race will typically include a taper period of two to three weeks. If you've been following this series for any length of time, you'll no doubt recognize this cadence. We then of course need to break these blocks up further into what are called micro cycles, which are the smallest unit, usually a week at a time, where we determine what the actual daily activities are gonna be. And again, here you'll see that my micro cycles are usually based around a rest day on Monday with at least one intensity session midweek, along with one or two long runs on the weekends, and then a bit of maintenance running or cross training on the days in between. Now, along with our primary goal, the race that our micro cycle might be ultimately leading up to, we might throw in one or two B races as tune-ups or even to use as speed work sessions. But the objective here is of course to help us to continue to adapt and to gain fitness towards our ultimate goal. So what happens once our goal race comes and goes? Well, the first thing to recognize is that we can't simply pick up where we left off in our training. I like to think of my training as being like making daily deposits in my bank account. Sometimes these are small and sometimes they're bigger. And other times, like on a rest day, I'm just letting the interest compound. Racing, on the other hand, is like making a withdrawal. We've diligently saved all season and now is the time to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And how hard you race, how much damage you do to your body, will ultimately determine how big of a withdrawal that you've made and how much is left in your account afterwards. After doing a big 200 mile race like Tour des Jean, for example, I knew that I was stuck taking at least a few weeks off before very gradually getting back into running. My legs were completely trashed and I'd put a lot of stress on virtually every organ and system in my body, not to mention my mind. Trying to get back to training too quickly after an event of that size can very easily lead to burnout and injury and could possibly have long-term health consequences as well. 100 milers and shorter ultra distance marathons can be equally as stressful on the body. I know that coach David Roach generally advocates for one day of complete rest for every 10 miles raced. So 10 days of full rest following a 100 miler followed by the same period doing mostly easy activity before finally returning to somewhat normal training while still limiting any excessively long runs for some time. So we're talking a good month before regular training can resume following a 100 miler. But what about those people who race all the time, running ultras once a month or even more often, you might be wondering. Well, there's a difference between training to race and racing to train. I run ultras all the time in my training. You would have seen me doing several long runs over 60 kilometers in lead up to my recent race here in Georgia. But these of course were not putting the same amount of stress on my body as a race of the same distance would have. Logically, there's just no way that someone racing every few weeks is able to give it the same effort or to perform at nearly their full potential every time. So my challenge now is that my next race, the 106 mile UTMB in the Alps, is coming up in just under eight weeks. 
and I've still got a lot of work to do, given that I need to now completely shift gears from what was a relatively flat and runnable race in Georgia to a much more mountainous race where I'll be doing a lot of hiking with poles. Fortunately, when it comes to stage racing, the stress on the body isn't exactly the same as a comparable distance race of a single stage. So while I did race 250 kilometers in Georgia, this was split up into six stages over seven days where I was able to rest in between each stage. So I was effectively recovering as I went. Now I was racing quite hard though when I was running, say at around 50 kilometer race pace or effort, particularly on the long stage where I had to dig pretty deep. But it's not the same as running 250 kilometers over just a few days with no sleep, where that recovery period, that day for every 10 miles, would start only after the race is totally done. My legs felt way better after this race than after any 100 miler I'd done, that's for sure. But I did feel a very deep fatigue and I found that I was getting actually winded just walking upstairs in the kind of few days following the race. So clearly all of those miles throughout the week, along with that caloric deficit that I experienced, did take a toll. So you could say that I made a pretty significant withdrawal from my fitness bank account, but fortunately I don't think I ended up anywhere near zero. This week I'll be getting back to my training and we're still working on the rest of my training program in lead up to UTMB, but the focus will likely be on getting some vert in my legs as soon as possible, both on the climbs and on the descents. I've still got most of my base fitness, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm confident that this will carry over from my training in lead up to Georgia. But I need to be careful not to burn myself out and not to come back to training too hard and too soon. So it's a fine line. Next week, Audrey and I will be heading down to Colorado for the Hard Rock 100 on the weekend of July 15th. We've got some friends in the race who will be supporting and will likely be jumping in for some pacing duties as well. And what better place to get some vert in my legs along with a bit of altitude training than in the San Juan Mountains. We'll then be back home for about a week before we then again head off to France to fast pack the Tour de Mont Blanc in the first week of my final block of training in August. And fast packing the TMB is ultimately going to represent the majority of my actual training for UTMB. The rest of this training here in Colorado I really see as preparation for that week on the TMB. And then I'll pretty much just be tapering after that. So stay tuned for some footage from Colorado. I'll also be providing you with a look behind the scenes at the Hard Rock 100. But in the meantime, be sure to check out my film from the 2015 Hard Rock 100 if you haven't already. I'll include a link to that in the description below. I've started working on my series from Georgia as well, but realistically, that's gonna take me at least a couple of months to finish. So I'm expecting more like a mid-October publication schedule, but I promise you it will be worth the wait. So until then, if you found this video helpful, give it a like and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this.